wars the Dominion from the Laurentians to the Rockies, all Canada hears and heeds the call of its national game, hockey, the king of winter sports as it looks from Bill Stern's corner. Up here, every shaver old enough to strap steel onto his feet feels the fever from the bite of the hockey bug. It doesn't take them long to learn all the little tricks of the trade. Heat him up, sonny. One way to fill Big Brother's shoes is to put them on over your own. Eh, small fry? You couldn't keep a hockey stick out of a Canadian kid's hand if he had to play the game in Mom's icebox. Any old spot there's a stretch of frozen H2O is Maple Leaf Garden to them. Hey, Buster, you spilled something. Well, don't let it bother you. Before it froze, it was soft water. Whoops, <laughs> there you go again. A battered garbage can and a bushel basket marked the goal. Will you ever forget the good old days? Youngsters steeped in the tradition of the great Eddie Shore, gallant little Roy Waters, Hap Day, King Clancy, Joe Primo, Frank Boucher, the Conickers, Davy Kerr, and speaking of Kerr, Here's a lad who does some pretty fancy net finding himself, and not yet in his teens. It's hard, clean sport like this that has developed a quick thinking initiative in team play. Canadian fighting men have displayed on the battlefronts of the world. When they're 13, many Pee Wee puck chasers are organized into teams and leagues under coaches like Purse Topping, former president of Toronto's Hockey League. Topping is one of four men ever appointed to life membership in Canada's greatest athletic organization. Many of the youngsters follow in their dad's footsteps. This is the son of Charlie Conacher, famed big bomber, one of hockey's all-time greats. Purse starts right in teaching fundamentals, how to hold a stick and how to put dynamite into the shot. First step in organized hockey. From here on, almost every junior stick wielder aims at becoming a professional star in the National Hockey League. And every one of them is given that opportunity thanks to men like Purse Topping. Dressing room of the Toronto Maple Leafs, the home of the champs. When the kid who chased his first puck across some frozen swamp parks his clothes in one of these lockers, he's reached the top. More pads than a lacrosse player or a footballer. Wonder with the granddaddies of hockey who played the first historic game at McGill University 65 years ago would think of all this elaborate preparation. Shoulder pads. Hockey sure has come a long way since the days of its youth when the original rule stated that the stick couldn't be lifted any higher than the knees. They need plenty of protection today when the sky's the limit. Skates are scientifically designed of the finest steel. Of all the hockey player's equipment, his blades are the most important paraphernalia of his profession. Elbow guards. Even if the player didn't want to wear them, the management would insist. Hockey players represent a big capital investment, and every good manager protects his business assets. I say, old boy, don't forget your gloves and your stick. Carry on. We're going to practice with the world champion Maple Leafs. Introducing the most colorful puck chasers in the game today. Goalie Frank McCool, the Calgary kid. Captain Bob Davidson, left wing. Forward Nick Metz, hockey's best all-around player. Rugged Reggie Hamilton, defense man. Defense Wally Stanowski, promising newcomer. Defenseman Babe Pratt, the league's most valuable player. Center Tom Kennedy, niftiest stick handler in the league. Left wing Sweeney Schreiner, twice the league's leading scorer. Center Gus Bodner. 21-year-old sensation. Forward, Lorne Carr, hair trigger shot and whip it on skates. All under the tutorship of Coach Happy Day, who can teach him a thing or two about pushing a puck. Hap is one of the fabulous figures of the game. With a permanent and prominent place in Hockey's Hall of Fame, his name is known to every Canadian youngster. Hap believes in hammering at fundamentals. Hockey defense is built around blocking. Here's the two-man blockout. One answer to, why so many pads? Coach Day sends a speedster into a stone wall. Good practice at dishing it out and taking it. Tip the blockers. Keep low, use the hips, that is, unless your man tries flying. 
Double teaming by defensemen is bad business when two men come down the ice. It's like giving them a free shot. Hap stresses man-for-man -man defense to break up a fast skating combination. By breaking it up, ha, he probably means breaking their necks. Some nifty, swifty, dapper Dan passing. A backhand swipe down behind the cage to a forward who ships it out to his wing. A bit of tricky ice cutting through the defense. And he drills it in. From the face off, a carom shot off the boards. Picked up by the wing, he passes to the center who makes the goal. Three man combination center to right wing. With the defenseman out of position, the pass is clear across to the left wing, who rifles it in. The famous half day smother brand of hockey. Pull the defense out of the play, leaving the goalie on his own. Brother, this is murder on ice. Says the coach, keep that puck moving fast. Teamwork's the answer to what makes a winning combination. Here's a free lesson in stick work by Ted Kennedy, the neatest hickory handler in the game today. Perfect control, the result of keeping the wrists relaxed, elbows in against the body. Ah, what a peaceful pastime hockey is. Played by a set of gentle gents, a merry lock, a minuet on ice, an old, old school tradition. Have a go at it, old chap. It wouldn't be sporting to stand in your path. Ah, uh, yeah? There isn't a hockey fan living who'd believe that. And if any of you sport fans in the States think that's on the level, just come along to the Maple Leaf Garden. This is the mecca of the hockey faithful. And then as a minion, that would total up in the millions. We're going in with a crowd for the payoff game in the Stanley Cup play, the World Series of Hockey. <laughs> Introducing Major Connie Smythe, veteran of both world wars, one of the most colorful men in sports, Prexy of the brawn and brain that are the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now for the fastest game on two feet, the Leafs versus the Detroit Red Wings for the puck-chasing championship of the world. The Leafs driving to our right, Tom Kennedy, number 10, rifling the puck onto Detroit ice. It's Canadian against Canadian, for even in the States, 95% of the pro stars hail from the Dominion. Number five, Mo Morris tossing a neat body block. Captain Bob Davidson, number four, brings it back up with some pretty fancy stick handling. Bob shoots it across to number eight, Mel Hill. There it goes, and the Detroit goalie makes the save. Lauren Carr, cutting plenty of ice on his way back towards the Detroit cage. Boy, those Red Wings are playing for keeps. Look at that defense man throw a body check. Sweeney Schreiner, number 11, to the rescue. They double-team him, and down goes Sweeney. Brother, this is assault and battery on blades. You get plenty of action for your money in this game. <laughs> Forward Mel Hill, leading the leaf attack again. A regular leaping Lena. They can't stop him. Stand by for a crash landing. There's always a personal battle to liven up the proceedings. And those sticks are pretty rough weapons. Here we go again. It's a rip-roaring stand-up-and-fight whirlwind of flying sticks and flashing skates. Here comes Hill again, number eight, the Flying Dutchman. Aha! So you thought hockey was something they play in a young lady's seminary. Cemetery would be a better word. Incidentally, that Detroit netminder's a long way from dead when he can pile them up like this. Greg Hamilton isn't sitting this one out. He's still right in that old game. Goalie Frank McCool makes a beautiful stop. Down the ice goes Sweeney Schreiner with a puck, then passes it to Kennedy, who rifles it in the cage to win the Stanley Cup and the championship of the world. Fans is why puck chasing Canada's national game is taking the world of sports by storm.